So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. I want to talk to you today about Christian fatherhood. Christian fatherhood. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll be covering the first five verses. And let me give you the outline. There's six B's of Christian fatherhood. Six B's. All right? Number one, be strong. Be strong. We need to have strong fathers. Number two, be faithful. Be faithful. Number three, be a teacher. Folks, we teach every day of our lives. We don't even know it sometimes, and we are teaching because people are watching us. Number four, be a good soldier. Be a good soldier. Number five, be an example. Be an example. And number six, be honest. And we're taking this right from the text. You know, being a father is a big responsibility, but being a Christian father is a huge challenge in our world today. Thankfully, we have the Word of God uh, to guide us through Christian fatherhood. And really, these are six characteristics that we need in our personal lives, men, and fathers. And folks, this, this applies to everyone. It's not just for fathers. It's talking about Christians. As Christians, we need these characteristics in our lives also. So let's just jump in right now. 2 Timothy chapter, one, chapter 2, verse 1. You therefore, my son. Now notice the word son there. Uh, you know, Paul was not Timothy's biological father but he was probably saved under his ministry. Paul probably discipled him also and invested in his life. And uh, as Timothy grew older and he surrendered to the ministry, Paul continued to take that special uh, interest in Timothy's life. And, and later on, Timothy even bega uh, became a pastor and I can relate to this also uh, uh, as I taught college and career class in Cameron Baptist Church uh, in Lawton, Oklahoma. Out of a period of about eight years, we had seven folks in our college and career class surrender to some kind of ministry. Some of them were missionaries. Uh, some of them were preachers. I know one of them became an educational director and one became a, a, a ladies' leader, a women's leader. And so it's really, really important. We, as a mature Christians, invest in the lives uh, you know, of young people. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Jesus Christ. Folks, we all live under grace. God's riches at Christ's expense. We all have experience the grace of God in our life. And we need to extend that grace to people around us. Nobody's perfect. Nobody does the right thing every time. And we need to be ministers of encouragement. We need to encourage the young families and the young fathers and the young wives in the ministry. So we need to be strong. And there's several kinds of strength. Uh, here, I want to mention you can be mentally strong. We need mental, mentally strong men. We need to be physically strong. That means work, all right? Even on the mission field, I'm telling you, it's a lot of work. We need to be emotionally strong in supporting. You know, our, our, you know, our times just go up and down and you know, there's all kinds of, of things and emotions that people have. And uh, we as fathers need to understand that, uh, you know, especially our daughters go through emotional times. But the, top, the kind of strength uh, I think the Word of God is teaching here is spiritually strong. We need spiritually strong fathers. I cannot tell you how important that is. Why? Because there is an attack on the family, folks. You look at this world, you look at advertisements, you look at agendas, 
And they are attacking uh, the fiber of our nation. They are saying right is wrong and wrong is right. And if you want to, if you feel it and you know it's okay with you, then it's okay. But folks, what the word of God says is what we need to go by. We need biblical families. We need biblical fathers who are strong. And one of the areas that our fathers need to be strong is in spiritual warfare. God has blessed us with families and blessed us with children. And we are responsible spiritually for our families. Look in, uh, if you would, with me to Ephesians chapter 6. Just turn back just a little. A few, few chapters. Ephesians 6, verse 10. Ephesians 6, 10. Finally, my brethren, he's talking to Christians, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Men, we can't do it on our own. We have to lean on God. We have to depend on God. We need to understand our strength comes from God. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I'm telling you men, fathers, the devil is attacking our families. He's throwing those arrows at our families. He's trying to discourage our kids. He's trying to depress our wives. He's trying to take over and we as Christian men need to be strong in the Lord. We need to be prayer warriors. We need to be prayer warriors. We need to lead out spiritually. Look at verse 12. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darkness, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Folks, I know sometimes, uh, you know, there are relationships and family where there's clashing. Me and my father did not get along when I was a teenager. And I am telling you, it was my fault. I thought he didn't know nothing. I thought his rules were too strict. And I should have listened to my father. I, I, he had good advice. But me being that rebellious teenager. And you have to understand, as a father, kids go through those things. I'm not trying to justify that. I'm not trying to say it's okay. But to be spiritually strong is to guide them and to help them and, and to be there for them. Sometimes they have to hit rock bottom. And that's what I had to do even in my personal life before I was saved, before I realized that I needed to be saved and had made a false profession of faith. Look at verse 13. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, having done all to stand. Oh, listen to me, Father. Stand for God. Stand for the Word. Put on the armor of God. Gird your belt. All right, take your belt, the uh, the, the belt, and right through here, he gives those. The belt of truth. The belt of truth. The breastplate of righteousness. The feet shod with the gospel of peace. The shield of salvation. The, hel the helmet of salvation. The shield. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You go to battle spiritually for your family and for your kids every day before they leave the house and you need to thank God when they come in so men we need to be strong in the Lord the second thing we need to be we need to be faithful look back in our text be strong in the grace that is in Jesus and the thing that you have heard from me among many witnesses and Paul was saying hey be Faithful. Look what it says. Commit these to faithful men. Men, we need to be faithful to our wives. We need to be faithful to God. We need to be faithful to our children. Folks, faith is the basis of salvation. Faith, and the, the definition we see uh, in what we know, it's trusting in God. 
Our faith needs to be strong. In hard times, our faith needs to be strong. We need to be positive. We need to let them know, you know that things are going to work out. Things are going to be okay. And our faith needs to be strong in everything that we do. Faith means be committed to. Faithful means being committed to. And men, we, we commit to a lot of things. All right, we do. I mean, I coached as as I was uh, as Jonathan was growing up. I coached many of his teams, basketball and baseball. I never missed a practice. I was always faithful to be there. And folks, we need to do that in our spiritual lives also. They need to see you at church. They need to see your faith is strong. Matter of fact, Joshua chapter twenty four. Go there with me if you would. Look back in Joshua 24. And we know what Joshua is based on. It's, it's the children of Israel going into the promised land. And we know the many, many things that they overcame while they were there. A city called Jericho, which they said couldn't be you know, uh, defeated. God defeated. And, and the walls of Jericho came down. And they just kept walking all the way through the book of Joshua and taking the land because God was with them, because they were being faithful to God. And Joshua, in some of the last words that he was going to say in the book of Joshua and in his personal lives, and folks, the last words of people are quoted all the time. And he comes up to this, this time where he knew he was dying. He knew he wasn't going to be there uh, to lead them anymore. He pins these uh, famous words in Joshua 24, 24, verse 14. Now therefore, fear the Lord. Men, we need to fear the Lord. Fear is not being afraid of Him. Fear is respecting God. One of the things my father instilled in me was a work ethic. And one thing that he did that he hung to the whole time of his life was uh, he took us to church every time the doors were open. I mean Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. He told his bosses, he was at Southwestern Bell, and he worked at Southwestern Bell for 36 years and was faithful to that. To that. But he told them, I will not work on Sunday. Twice in his life, he got new bosses in. And, and both of these bosses, I can, I, I'll always remember this, told him, you are going to work on Sunday if I need you. And my dad, each time new bosses come in, I'm not doing it. And one of them fired him. Just flat fired him. And he just said, hey, I'm going to church. I'm not coming in. And he fired him. And you know what happened? About three or four days later, the boss come back and said, uh, I need you to come back to work. You don't have to work on Sundays. He took his stand. And do you know why? Because the, be, truthfully, is the guy needed him. Now, we're going back in time here. There were only two PBX repairmen in the state of Oklahoma, and my father was one of them. He had the west side of Oklahoma, and the other guy had the east side of Oklahoma City. But my father was faithful. Okay? He was faithful. And we men need to be faithful. Now therefore fear the Lord. Serve Him in sincerity and in truth. Put away the goods which your father served on the other side of the river and in Egypt. Look at this. Men, serve the Lord. I know we have to have jobs. I know we have to uh, make money. I understand that. But put God first in your life. Steve, we sang that. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. That's Scripture, folks. And it says, And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourself this day who you will serve. Oh, folks, we must, as Christian fathers, serve the Lord. Whether the gods which your, your father served were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you came to my house and you walked in our entryway, 
there is a big sign right there to your right that has this quoted. And it's a sign that says, but as for me and my house, we will serve. Many of you have that in your lives. And I thank God for the faithful fathers. I thank God for my father. I truly believe, even though in, in you know, it was those college days, you know, the best days and the best relationship uh, my father and I had uh, was when I moved away and I didn't see him. I know that sounds negative. I don't mean that to be negative. But when I went back to Oklahoma, it was a special time, okay? And my father, I'm telling you, him and my mom prayed for me every day of my life. Every day. I've been in ministry 42 years, and every day that they were alive, they prayed for me. So we need men and fathers to be strong. We need to be faithful, and we also need to be a teacher. A teacher. Look at the rest of this verse. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Men, we need to teach our, teach our kids life issues. Do you, do you realize that somebody's watching you all the time? Dads, fathers, someone's watching you all the time. You are, uh, you are teaching. Uh, and my father did not like school. I'm telling you, he dropped out in the 11th grade. Didn't even finish. I like to never found that out. My mom told on him one time. <laughs> Because he thought I'd do the same thing. I know what my father was thinking. But you know, my father was smart. He would go to those classes uh, with Southwestern Bell. He would ace those classes. He would ace every... But he just wasn't interested in school. And the thing I noticed most about my father, he taught by example, and he also taught me. For instance, he, you know, when you could, used to work, could work on cars... He tried his best to teach me maintenance and taking care of, of cars. But again, I, I, I did not listen. I did not take his advice there. And I could, he, I could have saved a lot of money early in my, my you know, Lori and I's life if I would have just listened to him. And I just, what I would do is I'd work for a while and then the guys would come by and say, hey, you got the only baseball, let's go play baseball. And I would go do something. But my father taught me, he taught me a work ethic. He taught, taught me, you know, what honesty was. He taught me, uh, you know, just life lessons. You know, I seen him every night. He was, I mean, he hardly ever came home in time for supper. But mom would make us supper. She would wrap, uh, make a plate and wrap it up and sit it on the stove till he got there. But every night, before my father went to bed, he had a green rocking chair in his bedroom. And every night before I, I would walk by their, by their bedroom, and this is about 9 or 9.30, somewhere between there at night, I would see my father sitting in that rocking chair reading the Word of God. And you know, my father became one of... I'm telling you, when I went on vacations, I was amazed at what my father knew about the Word of God. He knew the Word of God. He wasn't, he was a teacher. He wasn't called to preach or anything, but he was an excellent teacher. He studied. And folks, and, and men especially, we teach by example. We teach. And, and for, for your family to see you spending time in the Word of God is so, so important. Being a teacher is a huge responsibility. And it is a calling but we teach every day of our lives. 2 Timothy 4. Just go over a chapter or two. 2 Timothy 4. Paul is coming down to the end of his life. And he says this, preach the Word. You say, well, I wasn't called to preach. Hey, you're preaching every day. You can preach and not say a word. By what you say, by what you do, how you act, where you go your reaction to things. You're preaching a sermon every day of your life. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering, which is patience, 
and teaching. My father could fix anything. I don't know, he, his mind was, you know, even as a kid, my, my granny used to say he would take things apart just to see how they work and put them back together. If we, if something, if our TV went out, you know what we did? We took the back off of the TV and we got them bulbs and we, he, he would figure out which one wasn't. He fixed coffee pots, he fixed, and, and again, folks, uh, there's all kinds of teaching. We need to teach our kids and also we need to teach them spiritually. Spiritually is what he is talking about. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. Folks, I'm telling you that time is now. This is now. There is so much false teaching out there. There's so much false doctrine out there. There are so many people that compromise the Word of God and they don't take it literally. They don't take it word for word. They try to change the Word of God. And folks, the Word of God is truth. It is yes. It is amen. And we as fathers need to teach the Word of God. Look at verse 5. But you be watchful in all things. Uh, uh, endure afflictions. Do the work of evangelists and fulfill your ministry. I believe I got into the ministry because of the strong faith of my mother and my father. I saw them help out at church. I saw them give to the poor. I saw them emulate Jesus. And fathers, we need to be teachers in a lot of ways. So we need to be strong. We need to be faithful. We need to be a teacher. The fourth thing I want you to see, we must be a good soldier. A good soldier. Look at verse 3. Look at verse 3. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier. Of Jesus Christ. I'm proud of my father's service. Uh, he uh, was in the military and he was just there for four years, but he was in the Korean conflict. And I'm telling you, he served his country well. I had five uncles, my mother's uh, brothers, all five of them served in the military. Uh, one was a helicopter pilot. Uh, you know, all of them uh, did their service uh, to our country and, and, and to our country and to our flag. And uh, folks, uh, we need to be proud of the, and, and we're going to, in, in a couple of weeks, we're going to do a God and country uh, service. And folks, we live in the greatest country in the world. And I thank God for our military men and our military women but do you realize, men, uh, that we are as Christians in the Lord's army? We're in the Lord's army, okay? And, and we as fathers need to be good soldiers. You think about all the things uh, that soldiers have to go through. I mean, you even think about the old days uh, during the American Revolution and you know, uh, all that was going on in the hardships. Uh, you know, they didn't have air conditioners uh, back then. They didn't have the things that we have now. But they just kept pushing through. And folks, living the Christian life, listen, fathers, it's not an easy thing. Raising kids in this environment, in, in this setting, in, in this time in which we live, is not an easy thing. But we need to be good soldiers. We need to show up every day. We need to show up every day. Spiritually, we need to show up. And folks, what do soldiers do? They defend. They defend our freedom. They defend our country. They defend families. They go overseas for a long length of time at times. They're away from their families. I, I just think you know, even in the Navy, I, I'm just not sure I could get on a boat and hang out there for that long. 
I'm not sure I could get down and do that, but these men and these women do it for us. So we as Christians need to be good soldiers for our Lord and Christ. And a soldier has discipline in their lives. Fathers, we need discipline in our lives. We don't need to fear. When the enemy comes at us, we need to be ready for battle as we have spoken earlier. Look at Joshua chapter 1. Joshua 1. We read verse 24, but let's look back at the first part of it. And again, Joshua, who took Moses' place. And can you imagine the pressure that was on him? I'm telling you, that'd be like following Billy Graham, you know, somewhere. Or following, I'd hate to follow J. Harold Smith, you know, you know, or someone like that. But God called Joshua to this. And Joshua uh, was a good soldier. And he kept telling them, listen, it's ours. Joshua and Caleb, even way back in Numbers, was saying, God's given us this land. God's going to help us conquer that. We need to go into the land. We need to do this. And pick up in verse 7. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. Folks, we have uh, instructions. We have instructions. We have a plan. And that plan is God's will for our lives. And we need to stay in the will of God in everything that we do. Now look at verse 8. This book of the law shall not depart uh, from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. Every job you ever have, there, there are, has to be some instructions somewhere to tell you what to do, what your responsibilities are, what you need to do to be successful. And folks, we as Christians, fathers, we as Christians, fathers, we have an instruction book, and that book is the Word of God. The Word of God helps us, it leads us, it guides us. And notice the Word, it says the same thing in Psalm chapter 1. Meditate in it day and night. The biggest mistake Christians make in reading the Bible is being in a hurry. You cannot comprehend if you're in a hurry. You have to block out time. Time well spent meditating on the Word of God. And look what he says. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Folks, you can't fail following God's holy word. You cannot fail as a Christian or as a father doing what God tells you to do. Have I not commanded you? Look at this. Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Fathers, you're not alone. You're not on an island. And I know sometimes uh, Christian families just almost feel like it's us against the world. But it's not, folks. God is there with you. He is in you. He is, in, he is beside you. And folks, we as Christian fathers need to be good soldiers. Well, the fifth thing I want you to see is found in verse 4. Not only be strong, be faithful, be a teacher, be a good soldier, but be an example. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. You realize you signed up? You signed, if you are a Christian, you signed up. Well, I didn't see no dotted line anywhere. But when you accepted Jesus Christ into your life, you accepted him by faith. You said, God, I want you more than I want anything else in my life. You enrolled in the Lord's army, and maybe you didn't realize that was the thing that you did. But what is it talking about here? Entangling himself with the affairs of this life. Here's what I call distractions. Distractions. Anything that takes you away from God. 
anything that comes between you and God is a distraction and you don't need it in your life. You don't need it. And again, you know, this is my personal thing that I did years ago, okay? And it was I walked away from Facebook. And I tell you why, it became a distraction in my life. I would spend more time on Facebook than I would in the Word of God. I would spend more time on Facebook than praying like I should. And folks, I am telling you, the, the national media and, and the internet and all these things, it is killing our personal relationships. It hurts our relationship with God. And again, I'm not saying throw Facebook away. I'm saying you write down, I double dog dare you to do this. You write down this week how, how many hours you spend. Now don't change it. Okay, don't just say I'm going to put it down. Just do what you normally do and you write down how many hours you spend on... I, we were at a restaurant uh, yesterday. I started looking around and counting my table. I'm telling you, every table, the first five tables that I looked at, somebody was on their phone while we were eating. What if we spent that much time in the Word, Father? What if we spent that much time in prayer. And folks, I'm telling you, it is, it is hurting society. It is hurting our manners. One thing, while we're eating, while we're trying to call, I, I think it's rude to be on the phone, okay? You know what our rule is when you come in the house and it's Thanksgiving? We put a little box right there. Our family has to put their phones in the box. I'm just telling you. Look what it says. No one engaged in warfare and tanks himself with the affairs of... I'm not saying you don't... You shouldn't have a phone. I'm saying don't let anything distract you from your relationship with Jesus Christ. Okay? I like sports. Man, I had a good day yesterday. Oklahoma won baseball. Arkansas won baseball. And if they stay on track, we're going to meet each other. There's nothing wrong with me watching baseball. There's nothing wrong with me watching football. I love golf. You know what I'm going to do this afternoon? I'm going to go and I'm going to watch golf. And in about six minutes, I'll, I'll be out. There's nothing wrong with watching TV. It's how much you watch these things. These are distractions, men, into our life. And we need to be good role models. 1 Timothy 4. 1 Timothy 4. Verse 12. 1 Timothy 4.12. Well, I was in 2 Timothy. 1 Timothy 4.12. Let no one despise your youth. Timothy was a youth. He was a young pastor. A young man. But be an example to believers. And this is talking about your family also. To other Christians, but your family. Look at this. In word. In conduct. We men, we need to be examples. In conduct. At T-ball games. Can I help you here? Go to a T-ball game earlier this year and a guy, a, a father, a, well actually he was a grandfather, yelling at a call at a T-ball game at the umpire. The kid wasn't even shaving yet that was umpiring. Folks, quit it. In conduct. In love. In spirit in faith, and in purity. Folks, our kids see how we react to things. They see the example that we said, and we need to be a good example. And the last thing, the last thing is be honest. Be honest. Exodus 20, you don't have to go there because you know it. Thou shalt not bear false witness. We need to be honest, men. My father was one of the most honest men I've ever met in my life. He really is. His word was truth. If you tell your kids you're going to take them somewhere, take them there. Be honest in everything 
deals, business deals, anything. If somebody gives you too much change, go back to the store and give it back to them. Well, that was their mistake. No, folks, you can, you can influence your kids because you went back for that reason and you can also encourage the person that made a mistake. So let your word, don't lie. Never lie. Don't lie to your kids. Don't. Don't. Because they will turn out to be liars also. So be honest in everything you do. Well, Christian fathers and grandfathers, I know we have a lot of grandfathers here. I hope you are taking your responsibility serious. I know we're not perfect. I know even as a pastor, even as a father, even as a grandfather, I don't always do the right thing. Nobody does. But I want to do that. I want to be these things that we that we spoke of. I want to be strong in the Lord. I want to be faithful. I want to be a teacher. I want to be a good soldier. As a matter of fact, I've told Steve this. When I die, I did not serve in the military. And I love a military funeral. I love to be at the National Cemetery. Tears come up in my eyes when they play taps every time. But if I die here and I get to be buried here, on my casket right in front of me, I want a Christian flag. I want my memories to be maybe he wasn't the best father in the world. Maybe he wasn't the best preacher in the world. Maybe he wasn't, and you fill in the blank. But I want people to know Brother Mike was a Christian. There's no doubt in my mind. And I want to serve my Lord and Savior till the day I die. I hope y'all have to pick me up and take me off of this stage. Because it would be an honor to die in the house of God preaching the Word of God. Dads, you have a huge responsibility. Huge. You can do it. You can do it. Father, thank You for this day. I thank You for Your Word. God, I thank You for our fathers. God, I know we mess up. God, I know we just uh, sometimes don't do the right thing. But God, I pray that the Scripture today and the Word of God has challenged us. God, I pray that we could just forget the past. God, I pray even today, I, I pray some would come to the front and pray and just leave the past on the altar. And God, I pray that they would even go home and say to their family, hey, today's the first day of the rest of our lives. God, I want to be a good father. I want to be a great grandfather. And God, I want to be a great soldier for you. So oh God, I pray other men, even at this time, would want the same thing. So oh God, this is your church. This is your time. This is your invitation. God, I pray you do with it what you choose. Maybe somebody needs to be saved today. God, I pray the Holy Spirit would instruct them. Just go down. You've been thinking about it. Just go down. I pray maybe somebody will rededicate their life or come for baptism. Oh Lord, you even join the church. I know it's Father's Day, but you can join the church on Father's Day. So God, just do your work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Would you stand to your feet? If God has spoken to you in any way, would you come? We thank you for joining us this morning at Rahil Baptist Church. And may God richly bless you.